guys, it's Kira and welcome back to another vlog. Today's vlog is a particularly exciting one because it's in collaboration with my friend M from the channel A Little Writer M. I will of course leave M's channel linked down below, so definitely go and check her out, especially to see her side of this collab. But the reason for this collab and what you're going to be seeing throughout this entire vlog is Em and I decided to read three of the books from Reese Witherspoon's book club. This was 100% Em's idea and I just jumped on because it sounded like so much fun. And I'd actually never consciously read a Reese's book club pick before, although having looked through the list, I think I've read about four or five of them altogether. But her list is so varied. She has an adult book club and a YA book club, and she really dips into every Every single genre, non-fiction, fiction, fiction um, like thrillers, contemporaries, romances, everything else in between and it is so varied which is wonderful because I feel like it means that you can just pick which ones you fancy and leave everything else. So Em and I have selected three of those books and we've tried to pick books that all sound quite different and also ones that at least I personally don't know too much about because I think it's going to be fun to just go into this without really too much prior knowledge and just see what I think of all of these books. So the books that we have selected for this little reading vlog I'm so excited about and they are Outlawed by Anna North which I think is probably the most exciting one. I'm going to read the synopsis of this one because it just sounds so interesting. It says on the day of her wedding dance Ada feels lucky. She loves her broad-shouldered bashful husband and her job as an apprentice midwife but her luck will not last. It is every woman's duty to have a child to replace those that were lost in the great flu. And after a year of marriage and no pregnancy in a town where barren women are hanged as witches, Ada's survival depends on leaving everything behind that she knows. She joins up with the notorious Hole in the Wall gang. Its leader, a charismatic preacher turned robber known to all as the kid, wants to create a safe haven for women outcast from society. But to make this dream a reality, the gang hatches a treacherous plan and Ada must decide whether she's willing to risk her life for the possibility of a new kind of future for them all. So this one I think is the one of the three that I know the most about going into it and I picked this one specifically because it sounds very similar or at least has very similar themes to The Handmaid's Tale which is one of my favourite books of all time and this one just sounds so interesting. The next book we picked up was The Whisper Network by Chandler Baker. I don't really know too much about this one, this one was more of an end pick but it definitely sounds interesting. It says Sloane, Ardy, Grace and Rosalita have worked in the same legal office office for years. When the CEO dies suddenly, their boss, Ames, is in line for the top job. Ames has always been surrounded by whispers about how he treats women. Those whispers have been ignored, swept under the rug, hidden away by those in charge. But the world has changed and the women are watching this latest promotion for Ames differently. This time they've decided enough is enough. So that one sounds quite cool as well. And then the final one that we've picked, I don't actually have a physical copy of it. I'm going to be listening to this one as an audiobook, and that one is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. It's a memoir and I love listening to memoirs as audiobooks as I've recently discovered because I'm only quite new to the audiobook train but I thought that one would be perfect for an audiobook pick for this little reading vlog. And then as an additional little bonus alongside all of this reading, Em and I also decided that this week would be a great time to try out a 24 hour digital detox. Literally those words send shivers down my spine because I am so reliant on my phone and specifically, I guess, not necessarily on my phone, but on social media. I spend so much time on social media, so much time on YouTube, and I always am just picking up my phone. So that um, detox has started today. So today is, what date is it today? Good question. I'm not counting my Fitbit as a uh, digital item. <laughs> I actually don't know. So it's Thursday, which makes it the 4th of February. Thursday the 4th of February. So we put our phones down last night and from midnight to midnight we're not touching social media specifically but I'm trying to just stay away from my phone in general and my laptop except for like essential things like I did use the phone for an alarm this morning but the real challenge is 
to not rely on social media because I'm just always reaching for my phone and waking up this morning it was a really weird experience to not scroll first thing because that is usually what I do and I'm sure what lots of people do but I had to resist that this morning so I'm going to be trying to obviously do quite a lot of reading today and just do some other non-phone activities like I might do some baking, some watercolouring, see where the day takes me and I think I'm going to kick off my day by going for a walk although it is a miserable foggy grey day I want to get some steps in. <laughs> Well, so far, I'm glad to say that the digital detox hasn't been too horrific. It's about 12 o'clock now, so the morning is done and dusted. I was very busy this morning. I obviously went out for a walk and it ended up being quite a long walk because I've set myself a 10,000 steps a day minimum for February, which is quite a fun little challenge. I thought it would be nice because February is a solid four weeks and I thought I'd try and get in that 10,000 steps habit. So went out for a long walk. I also had to go to the post office and then when I came home, I got straight on with baking. Initially, I was planning to make a banana bread just because I have so many ripe bananas in the cupboard that I really, really, really need using up. Typically, I freeze them and then use them in smoothies later on, but because it's been so cold lately, haven't been having as many smoothies, which means that there hasn't been any room to put new bananas in the freezer tub so a banana bread seemed like a great idea until genius struck and I decided to make a banana biscoff blondie so it kind of is like a banana bread I just put it in like a brownie tin instead of in a loaf tin which I think made it cook slightly faster and honestly I'm pretty pleased with the result they smell incredible I mean anything with biscoff biscoff and banana is such a great combination and I'm so excited to eat this with my Earl Grey tea. But yeah, so I feel like this is where the real challenge is gonna start because I'm home. Don't really have any more jobs to do for the rest of the day, except for I might do some yoga and things like that. But essentially, I now just have a full afternoon to fill. So I'm gonna enjoy the Biscoff brownie, blondie, whatever it is. I'm gonna enjoy the Biscoff thing, have my cup of tea, and then I think I'm gonna do some reading, finally. <laughs>
say my biggest fear about doing this digital detox was that the day was going to just feel so, so long and like I didn't have anything to fill my time because honestly, whenever I'm even slightly bored, I always just find myself going on Instagram or TikTok and it's really weird that I haven't opened those apps at all today and it's now almost 4pm. But actually, the day is going way, way faster than I expected so probably a good lesson that maybe I don't need to go on those apps quite as often as I usually do. But I definitely think one thing that is helping the day fly by is this book, which as I imagined is incredible. I'm currently on page 96 of this book and it's got just over 200 pages. So I'm a little bit under halfway, but it is incredible. As predicted as well, it definitely has some similarities to The Handmaid's Tale, but it's more like, I guess, an a parallel universe as if like what would happen if the handmaids kind of rebelled and what would be the case for those ones that kind of escape and go off to live on their own. So we have our main character Ada who as I mentioned in the description is married, she was 17 years old and basically she finds out that she can't have children. It's not 100% clear whether it's her fault or her husband's fault and I don't really use fault in the sense that I view it as fault but the way that society views it within this book is that the fault of not being able to have children or being barren is placed on the women entirely and it's almost impossible to imagine that it could be a man's fault and so we see Ada fearing for her life, for her family's life and their safety and the way that they're going to be perceived by society so she ends up having to run away. At first she joins a convent which happens to be quite a common thing for women in Ada's situation but then she ends up leaving this convent and joining a gang of outlaws who are all women in similar circumstances to her as well. So that's kind of where we're at so far and it is so interesting to see this gang of women and how they've kind of turned what is obviously a really terrible situation that they've basically been like ousted from society into more of a positive circumstance. But there is a particular quote that I'm really interested in because there's a lot of like gentle and subtle foreshadowing within this book and this quote in particular I think makes it seem like something might go slightly awry and that is, at first it seemed like I might make a decent outlaw. And that's only a really, really simple quote, but I just feel like that suggests something going wrong and things not going to plan. And perhaps the Ada is gonna have to move on again and start to try and find a new life elsewhere. It's just so interesting, absolutely incredible, really captivating, and I just love it. I think it's really important to explore these issues of how even in like modern society, obviously infertility is a real thing that people deal with and it's not something that has plagued a whole nation because of some kind of big flu or whatever, but it is something that affects lots and lots of people. And I do still think it's a cause of a lot of shame, especially for women who can often be told that like childbearing is like the thing that you're made to do. And then the reality of some people not being able to do that or to fulfill that biological like requirement is a really difficult thing and although we're not sort of like witch hunting women who can't have children it is a really difficult topic I think and something that does sort of bring people a lot of unwarranted shame when actually it's not their fault whatsoever it's just a simple fact of biology and yet it's obviously a really big issue and I think this book is exploring that but in a really interesting way so loving this book I think I'm going to take a slight reading break maybe make a cup of tea fill up a hot water bottle because it's freezing and do some watercolour painting and then I'll do some more reading later on.
Good morning guys, it's now Friday, my hair is looking exceedingly wild but aside from that order has been restored to the world because I can go on TikTok again. So I thought I would do a quick social media detox debrief because honestly a day away from social media is so out of the ordinary for me. I often spend upwards of like five hours a day on my phone which I know is really bad. Partially I think that's a symptom of being in lockdown and having less things to do outside of the house and obviously less work to do so just kind of filling that time with social media but also I just enjoy it and I do think especially during lockdown it's a great way to feel connected with people because that obviously physical connection is limited so social media I think is a great tool and I know a lot of people take time away from social media for their mental health whereas I personally never feel like social media is negatively affecting my mental health. The reason I wanted to try out a bit of a detox was more so for productivity reasons because I wanted to see what I could fill my time with if I wasn't spending all day scrolling. So in terms of how it actually felt, it was actually a lot easier than I expected. I spent so much time scrolling that I just wasn't sure how it was going to feel, whether I was going to actually be able to manage it, but on the whole it actually wasn't too difficult. The main three apps I was trying to stay away from were TikTok, Instagram and YouTube because those are the ones that I fill most of my time with and actually for the most part spending my day reading, I did watch a bit of TV which I wasn't counting as part of the digital detox because I don't feel like TV is a big time waster for me because I don't actually spend that much time watching telly and I just needed something to fill the silence because otherwise I was just sat in a room on my own in total silence which is not a vibe. So watched a bit of TV and then I was painting, you know, reading doing all of that fun stuff and actually the day went really really quickly and I enjoyed it. It was nice to just sit down and not be distracted by other things. I noticed it the most when I was eating because that's when I'd usually sit down and either watch Instagram stories or go on TikTok or watch a YouTube video and stuff and I definitely missed social media during those gaps. However, it definitely made me see that I don't need to use social media as much as I do and actually the way that I would describe my urge to go on TikTok is kind of like an itch. There were parts in the day where I just wanted to reach for it but then obviously didn't and although I probably would have enjoyed a little bit of a scroll on TikTok, it definitely made me see that I don't need it in the same way and I I should definitely maybe limit my usage of those apps just a little bit more because then I'll be way more productive and I think what I am going to be enforcing is a 30 minute before bed and a 30 minute after waking up phone ban where I just either wind down for the evening without my phone or wake up naturally without using my phone to sort of bring me around and I think that will definitely be something nice to take away from this detox. Now Em and I will be discussing both of our experiences with this detox in a podcast episode which should go up before this vlog so you can go and check that out if you want to hear more about both of our experiences. And then bringing it back to books, I'm still part way through reading Outlawed. I'm now on page 202 and this one has about 250 pages. I am loving it. It basically feels like an old cowboy thing which is something that I wouldn't typically find myself being drawn to but when you then cross that over with like Handmaid's Tale gone rogue it's so interesting and I absolutely love 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 it. So it's now Friday morning I'm just getting ready to go out for my weekly social distance walk with my friend Sarah and then when I get back I'm going to be finishing this book. Shouldn't take me long at all because it's so interesting and I'm absolutely loving it. Hey guys, it's actually been a couple of days since I last caught up with you because I took a temporary pause from reading the Reese Witherspoon book club picks that me and Emma are reading and I was actually doing a 24 hour readathon which is going to be in a separate vlog but I am pleased to say that before that readathon started on Friday I did finish reading Outlawed. I just waited until today to wrap up my thoughts on it mostly because when I finished reading it it was dark and I hate wrapping up in the dark for some reason. So it is Sunday and I have some thoughts on Outlawed, mostly surrounding the fact that this book is 
incredible. I just absolutely loved it. I had really no idea what to expect from this other than that I hoped and thought that it was going to be similar to The Handmaid's Tale and it was very similar of course in terms of the themes that it explores and the way that women are used for their reproductive abilities and then shamed when they aren't able to have children or are perceived as not having as many children as they should or not having children as quickly as they should. However, whilst there are definitely some similarities, this book is so unique and definitely stands out as a completely separate entity to The Handmaid's Tale. So although I enjoy both of them for very similar reasons in the way that they explore these themes, they both offer very, very different things. And I just absolutely love this setting. I haven't ever really read anything in like an old Western cowboy style setting. But I absolutely loved this group of like female outlaws kind of making their own way in the world and it was absolutely wonderful. I ended up rating it four stars just because I felt the ending just left a little bit to be desired, mostly because it was only like a 200 and something page book. I absolutely loved this book and Ada was such an interesting main character that by the time we got to the end I just wanted to know a little bit more about what happened. Obviously not giving away any spoilers here but I feel like anyone who has read it probably knows what I'm talking about where you kind of just like get to a point and then it kind of just tapers off and I wish that we got to find out more about what happened at the conclusion because I feel like that would have been an equally interesting story. But either way, loved this book, it was incredible and I highly recommend it especially to anyone that likes The Handmaid's Tale but generally just to anyone because it's so good. So this was definitely a good start to this little Reese Witherspoon read along that we're doing. And then the next book that I'm picking up is Untamed by Glennon Doyle, which is the one that I don't have a physical copy of. I'm going to be listening to this one as an audiobook. So I'm going to start that later on this afternoon. And I'm so excited because if that book is anything to go by, Reese's Book Club has some incredible picks. So I'm very excited to see what Untamed is like. Good morning guys, it's now Monday I think, but honestly who even keeps track of days anymore because they all just blend into one to be completely honest. But I did start briefly listening to the Untamed audiobook yesterday evening. I listened to about four chapters um, and I've maybe listened to like 30-40 minutes altogether of this audiobook. I'm not sure exactly how I'm feeling about it yet because it is a memoir but it's not like the typical sort of memoir that I would listen to. I love a memoir like Educated by Tara Westover which kind of tells like a narrative story whereas this memoir seems to be a little bit more like specific events and then like what those events have meant to her or experiences and how they've kind of like built up her life. So I do feel like those ones take me a little bit longer to get into just because you don't feel like you're getting to know the person quite as well because you're kind of just getting like little snippets here and there whereas a more story-like memoir really allows you to get to know them but I am still quite close to the beginning there's still like seven hours of the audiobook left so by the end I might feel like I know her a little bit better and it might become slightly more cohesive but at the moment it's still certainly interesting the little snippets of information that you're getting about her life and about how she sort of came to untame herself as a woman are really interesting but I feel like I st definitely still need to listen to a lot more before I really feel like I'm into the story or at least I'm hoping that's how I'll feel but because it's quite a different kind of memoir to what I'd usually listen to I'm going to be reading the third and final book from our little Reese Witherspoon read along alongside this one because I want to have a physical book to read as well as an audiobook. So this is The Whisper Network by Chandler Baker and this one sounds like it's going to be really interesting. It seems like a bit of a like workplace related drama about a CEO that dies and some events that follow. So I'm going to be reading this one and then listening to the other audiobook as well and I'm really excited so I'll be keeping you updated. It's Monday, it's a new week and I'm going to make it good. <laughs> Well, I am hesitant to make a judgment too soon because I do still have over half of Untamed left to listen to, 
But at this very moment in time, I'm feeling like I'm not really liking this audiobook very much. And there is a couple of reasons why. The main one being that I feel like Glennon Doyle is trying to speak for womankind and she keeps referring to this like collective female experience, which is a concept that I just definitely reject. I think it's ridiculous to suggest that literally just because on the basis of being female, so many women have this exact same experience. Yes, that might be true for some people, but I feel like she's making these huge sweeping statements about how women are, I guess, just like forced to act a certain way just because they're female. and. Although again, that might be true for some people, that might be her experience. I feel like she's kind of suggesting that women are weak or have been forced into certain behaviour patterns just because of the fact that they're female and that that's the case for all women. And I just hate this collective female experience because I think it, first of all, is just ridiculous aside from sharing a gender identity. There are so many other things that make each individual woman different and make her an individual person that I think a collective experience just is far too simplistic of an idea and I also just feel like it doesn't account for everyone else's individual experiences that sit outside of hers. Now it's a memoir and I have no issue with her telling her story but it just comes across in a very collective way where she's talking on behalf of all women and I feel like it's kind of like pseudo empowering but it comes across really icky to me and that's the main reason that I'm not really liking it aside from like I said yesterday about the fact that I just don't like how it's more of a like snapshotty memoir rather than a cohesive story but I was willing to kind of get over that but actually at the core of the message of what she's telling I don't really love so obviously still got a lot to listen to and I will be listening to the entire thing I'm about to go out for a walk so I should be listening to at least 45 minutes of it now on my walk and I'm just gonna keep processing and seeing what I think but at this moment I feel like that one is going to be my least favourite out of the three books that we've read for this vlog. Now I don't say this about books very often because it's almost never true but I can wholeheartedly say that having just finished Untamed I hated it. I was hoping it was going to be the kind of book that grew on me and that I enjoyed more as I went on. I was pretty confident about halfway through that it was never going to be a book that I loved but having now completed the experience I really 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 disliked it for so many reasons and that is really rare for me because I love giving books good ratings, I love to love books, that's why I read, I don't read because I want to be overly critical and in general I would say I'm not a very critical reader and I choose to see the parts of books that I enjoy the most but with this one it was just so hard and there were a few reasons. Now the first red flag to me that kind of made me, I don't want to say mistrust the author but just kind of like become a little bit disillusioned was when I found out that she's like basically a career memoirist. I think this was her third memoir and you know maybe some people have interesting enough lives to make their full career writing memoirs but for the most part that it kind of felt like she was just writing stuff that she thinks sound interesting rather than writing an authentic story that she felt needed to be told and a lot of it just felt like words for the sake of words and I just felt like she even mentioned a certain point that when she was writing her second memoir that she started to wonder whether she was writing down the things that were happening in her life or whether she was writing first and then living afterwards and making the things that she wanted to happen happen because she'd written them already and I was just kind of feeling like the whole book just lacked a bit of authenticity because of that because it just kind of felt a little bit disingenuous so there was that there was as I mentioned the fact that she kind of writes about this collective female experience which is just the most bizarre concept ever and she's very it feels very confused because parts of it she's talking about her experiences she's like yeah this is just me but then she also uses these really generalized sweeping generic she's and women's and all kinds of things like that as if to suggest that her experience and her view of the world is reflective of everyone else's and that simply isn't true um 
so there's that. I feel like she doesn't necessarily recognize her own privilege a lot of the time, but then pseudo tries to show herself as being really woke and then kind of like contradicts that with what's actually happening. And then there's just so many bits that I didn't particularly enjoy. And I think it generally comes down to the fact that I don't particularly agree with her worldview. And I don't agree with the fact that she then tries to put that as the view that all women should have and that all women should be like she is and have the same view of women that she does. She often makes these sweeping statements about how great women are, which is fine in and of itself, but then she kind of seems to suggest that if women ran the world, everything would be great, which simply isn't true. And it kind of seems like not a feminist in that sense. It seems like she just wants to reverse the current patriarchy and have it that women would be in charge. And she doesn't account for the fact that whilst there are good women, there are also bad women. And while there are bad men, there are also good men. And I just feel like her whole view of women is that women are perfect and amazing and wonderful. And that's that. And then doesn't really allow for the nuance of the fact that women are just people and that gender is literally just one tiny part of a person. And it doesn't really equate to anything to do with your morality. So that was an issue. My final issue was that there was a section where she was talking about phones and how she was like stopping her teenage son from using his phone because it was taking him out of the real world. Obviously that's her prerogative as a parent but it was more so the way that she then talked about phones as basically being like responsible for a generation who will never achieve their potential. She was saying that children or people, I guess of like my age, cause she's in her like late forties. So her children are, you know, in their teens and twenties, I guess. So she's basically saying a whole generation of chefs will never get messy in the kitchen and become chefs. Artists will never put pen to paper. Writers will never write stories. Um, and basically saying that creativity has stopped because of the internet age when, in my experience, as someone with a YouTube channel, the internet is a great place for sharing creativity, for finding like-minded people, for learning about new things, for collaborating, and it's a great platform for creativity. Now that's, again, not the case for everyone, but she just makes these sweeping statements about basically how the internet is responsible for people being not creative, not empathetic, not ambitious, and basically just the, the internet and phones are like an evil thing, which is just not true. And she kind of seems to have an outdated mindset where because she comes from a generation that maybe didn't use phones as much, that must mean that people who've grown up in a digital age, therefore are doing it wrong when that's just not true. It's just that times are different now. So on the whole, would never recommend that book. Absolutely disliked it. It felt like a lot of drivel that was just words for the sake of words. And honestly, if I wasn't reading that book for the sake of doing this vlog and talking about it in the podcast and as a collaboration with Em, I would not have continued on with it because I disliked it that much. So that's that. But I am now very excited to start the Whisper Network properly. Now, as I said, I was going to start this one and read it along with Untamed, but because I was disliking Untamed so much, I decided to just try and read it as quickly as possible so that I wouldn't taint my experience of this book and that I could just move on to this one as soon as I could. So, many I started with this one today. I'm currently on page 20. 20 so I've only like just started it but I'm excited to see what I think of it and hopefully I enjoy this one more than Untamed. <laughs> I honestly think that I would have enjoyed The Whisper Network 
in general but having come to this book straight after finishing another book that I absolutely hated I'm appreciating this one so much more so I started this one yesterday evening I am now 200 and 35 pages into this read and it has about 400 pages altogether so a little bit over halfway and I'm really enjoying it. It's like a workplace mystery drama type novel so we have a group of women who've worked at this law firm for quite a few years. A new person starts and their boss who is a man that a few of them kind of think is a little bit dodgy starts behaving a little bit weirdly towards this new female employee and that kind of causes a chain reaction where he then gets accused of some past things and lots of drama is occurring and all of the chapters of this book are separated by transcripts of interviews from an inquiry and I always always love books that kind of hint at and foreshadow a larger event having happened and gradually drip information in about that but then you kind of as the reader generally spend time leading up to that event but I just always really like knowing that it's coming and trying to piece all of the bits together so I'm really enjoying it and it's very very interesting so I'm really glad that I'm enjoying this one so much more than Untamed. Now my plans for today essentially are to go out for a walk in a minute and then when I get back I'm essentially just going to be trying to finish this book and I don't think it's going to take me too long because it's really interesting and because of the way that it sort of is building up to this bigger event I'm sure it's only going to get more interesting as we go. Now the next day, I honestly think I might be wearing the same jumper as yesterday, but I can't entirely remember to be completely honest. And if that is not a symptom of lockdown life, then I don't know what is. But it is the next day and I'm very pleased to report that I did finish reading The Whisper Network last night. And I really, really enjoyed this book. It combined things in a way that I don't often see in a book because it is both a thriller and a contemporary character study. And so it combines things. That I think those two genres usually feel very separate from each other because in a thriller, I often find that it is very plot focused, dramatic and intriguing. And you're obviously really trying to figure out a mystery. And then in a character focused, contemporary or maybe more literary fiction style novel, you get more of that intricate character study watching different characters and their relationships with one another evolve and I also really love that and I don't often see those two things brought together in one book because usually the author kind of chooses between whether it's a super plot focused or a super character focused novel whereas this one I felt did both because it is this really intriguing thrillery novel but it's set in a workplace which is very complicated and you have this really intriguing dynamic between a group of women working in this one office building and so you really do get the opportunity to know all of the characters in the same depth that I think you would see in a contemporary more character focused novel but you also have the drama of this thriller interweaved throughout all of that and I think it works really well that the book sort of shows various transcripts and witness statements throughout the novel so you kind of get that hint of thriller all the way through but you're also really getting to know the characters super well and I was kind of sort of concerned at the beginning of the book that perhaps it would feel a bit rushed because it was doing so much but actually Chandler Baker did such an incredible job of doing loads of things allowing you to get to know loads of different characters because there are so many different perspectives in this novel and managing to create the tension of a thriller and the depth of a contemporary character study and oh my god, flawless, oh, honestly amazing. I loved it and I just think it was really incredible how much she managed to achieve within this book because I was very impressed. But this book does bring this reading vlog and our little sort of foray into the Reese Witherspoon book club to an end. Read three books, two that I absolutely loved and one Untamed, which I obviously don't have a physical copy of that I wasn't such a fan of, but honestly to have found two books that I now can say that I absolutely love, I'm very happy with and Untamed just wasn't for me, but that doesn't mean that it is not gonna be for you. So of course, 
make your own opinions on it and maybe listen to it or read it for yourself and just see what you think. If I had to rate the books and sort of my experiences with them, I would have to say that Untamed is of course my least favourite. Next up would be The Whisper Network. I really did enjoy it, but I think Outlawed just comes out on top because I loved the combination of a Western with a dystopian and with the vibes of The Handmaid's Tale. And honestly, it was just everything that I could have wanted. So really, really did enjoy this experience. As I mentioned, this was a collaboration with M from the channel A Little Writer M. Her vlog will also be going up today, so we'll link that down below so you can go and check out her reading experience. And we also discussed our experience with this on the podcast this week, so we'll also link our podcast, which is called We're Spinning Plates. We talk about loads of different topics, everything from employment, post-graduation, relationships and books of course because it is us and we love books so there's loads of different topics and this week's topic was the Reese Witherspoon book club so definitely go and listen to that if you want to hear us have a little discussion about our thoughts together but thank you so so much for watching I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these books and I'll see you next time